Hello, everyone, and welcome to Season 5 of Goddamn GameCube. If you like our show, please leave us a rating on Spotify and subscribe on YouTube. Thank you, and enjoy today's episode. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Goddamn GameCube. This is going to be another installment of Nostalgia Bros, but I feel like this one is going to be more like the sad bros. Um, Because today we're going to be talking about the good and the bad and the ugly, which is uh, what happened to the Rayman franchise after the original trilogy. There's some good, there's some bad, there's some ugly. Uh, So um, Nick the intern, Nick my brother, uh, if you could lead the way here and maybe give the audience maybe some, uh, some insight into the structure of this. Go ahead. Sure thing. Thanks, Greg. Happy to be here. Uh, maybe not too happy for some of the games we're about to cover today. But yeah. so we are covering essentially the very important um, and main installments of the Rayman franchise after the original trilogy. The first starting with Raving Rabbids, then moving on to Rayman Origins and Legends, then the Mario and Rabbids series. And then, of course, moving on to the uh, Captain Laserhawk television show that was just released it was like a month ago? Yeah, like a that, month before this ago? recording. Yeah. Um, I, I really am. I'm going to save my thoughts for that segment, but it's it's not pretty. So <laughs> I'm uh, really curious to hear your thoughts about that. Yeah. OK, so <laughs> let's um let's start with uh, rabbits. Also, what I before you go in uh, yeah. and start this, what I this section to me, not only are we going to talk about rabbits a little, we are going to talk about the cancellation of Rayman four. So, Nick, why don't you start and then we'll we'll suss it out from there yeah sounds good all right thanks greg so the first rayman game um after rayman 3 uh was called raving rabbids it began when the studio head who we mentioned last episode as a uh michelle yeah michelle ansel michelle ansel yeah he had like a concept for a little rabbit character and that quickly turned into this actually a very strange creature called a rabbit if people listening you've never seen it it's like this white little being with big floppy ears and very creepy teeth it's it's kind of an unsettling little thing yeah it's just kind of like i guess that's his vision of like an evil minion disney character i was gonna gonna say that it's something like that (laughs) they really do remind me of minions and they're basically there to like perform mischief they're troublesome, meddlesome kind of guys. It's not too different than the hoodlums from three. No, it's not too different. Well, at all. I should say visually they're very different, but right. you know, it's just more more guys causing havoc. You know, <laughs> more guys causing more havoc. guys causing mischief. Just like our favorite game, Rayman Three. Oof. <laughs> so originally this was um, it's going to be a traditional platform game like we've seen before with Rayman, and it was tentatively called Rayman Four. Greg, do you want to get into this a little bit? Yeah. So I was. Um, Maybe I forgot about it, but I didn't realize that Rayman 4 ever got announced. It actually mm. did. I believe it was 2005. Yeah. And I was also kind of surprised that uh, Michelle Ansel was behind um, Rabbids, because we'll talk about in a few minutes, this game kind of turned out to be more of a party game and more of a game filled with mini games. So the original concept for Rayman 4 was it was going to be another 3D platform game. And um, there is actually like some prototypes of it that exist. Um, and so they were leaked in like 2021 and 2022. Mm. So I actually watched a lot of it. Oh. And Rayman 4, there's only like really raw prototype data or footage. And what it looks like is it kind of looks like Rayman 2 and 3 with like some Halo vehicles. It's really weird. <laughs> Wait, what? Halo but it's vehicles? only prototype footage. So it's hard to really say like what it would be or what it could be. There also was like a health and mana system in place. But it's a prototype, so all it says is health and mana and a number. Like, there isn't, like, you know, there isn't much of, like, a visual interface. It doesn't really show you what they do or why. It's just in the footage. Hmm. Um, And so from what I understand, like, um, Rayman 4 was in development for a few months. And then when the, the Wii dev kits arrived, I guess it this game being a traditional platformer was axed. And I'm I'm putting words into Michelle's mouth here, but I think when they saw the motion controls and how much of a mess developing for the Wii was, they said, fuck it, we're going to do like a shovelware party game, because that's most of what the Wii's discography was. Is this discography <laughs> even the right word? 
uh, never heard this library being used for <laughs> video games. But hey, you know it's what? Fine. We'll use it. Yeah. So it turned into uh, Rayman Raving Rabbids, which is like you said, a little bit more of a party game. Well, I should say this: yeah. like Rayman Raving Rabbids, it was actually gonna be the 3D platformer. It, it was yep. the same name, so mm-hmm. they just actually kept the name, ditched everything That's else right. about it. And what's also interesting before we move on to what Raving Rabbids ended up being, Rayman Four was actually supposed to be a retelling of Rayman One in a 3D space. Oh, interesting. So, but you know, blah blah mm-hmm. blah. It went from Rayman uh, One in a 3D space to no, we're gonna do this Rabbids from space like alien thing. Yep. And then no, we're we're gonna keep the the Raving Rabbids title, but it's now a party game. And that's where we are. That's that's a lot. It's that is where we are. Kind of as chaotic as the Rabbids ended up being. Yeah, correct. But um, anyway, so then Raving Rabbids became kind of, I don't want to call it a series, but there were multiple Rabbids games that yes. came after this one. Yes. And eventually they dropped Rayman from the branding entirely. I know. Isn't that this. strange? Very sad. And it, I, I hate saying this, but it almost became more popular because yeah. Raving Rabbids was very popular. Isn't that weird? Like I always think of it as like a Wii shovelware game, yeah. but it sold like 14 million copies. Oh yeah. Isn't that crazy? Massively popular game. Like all we're going to do is disparage it for the next like 30 <laughs> minutes, but like it was hugely popular. Yeah. And it's like, I don't know. I think we're mostly disparaging it because they got rid of our guy Rayman eventually. It's, from yeah. It. It's mostly like, like, like personal, like, like pitiful behavior from us or it's just like we're just mad that it's not a rayman game so now we don't like it that's right yeah exactly exactly did you want to talk a little bit about how like rabbits is put together like i have a little bit of it yeah let's i've do played that. maybe 30 seconds of it in my whole life let's do it yeah i mean from what i understand like i mean it's made up of like 75 mini games yeah you can play it as a story mode or you can just play it individually as a party game um and it's made up of like there are some first person shooter segments all the platforming is actually taken out Mm. there's like no adventuring anymore at all there's just these i don't know it's almost like a collection of 75 mario party games and that's i don't know what else you have in terms of this that's that's basically what i was gonna say about it it's a series of party games and allegedly it's pretty good people like it i mean do you have anything about how the 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 rabid sequels are any different or do you care like i personally don't care no not in particular uh as far as i'm concerned they're all very similar and when they eventually drop the rayman name i eventually stopped caring about yeah them. exactly that's kind of how it works so why don't we get into now are we calling that the bad or the ugly <sighs> it's probably the what's really i think it's bad <sighs> it's no i don't know i don't know either because like it was it was commercially kinda, it's it was kind of well received yeah. too. Commercially it's good. Fine. But to us it's not good. To us it's not. I mean that's kind of a theme for the show commercially. You're not, it's good. You're, you're not wrong. That's actually a really good quote. Like what what did you say like so commercially it's good but to goddamn GameCube it's not good. But that's kind of this whole show. That's right. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty much the whole show. That's right. Exactly. Um, okay, so I think the best thing to do is to move on to what I think is universally considered good, which is Rayman Origins and Legends. Yeah. So Nick, why don't you start there? They're very similar games, but you can kick it off. Yeah, let's do it. All right. So Rayman Origins released in 2011. Uh, for PS3, Xbox 360, and the Wii. And then some other versions, there was a 3DS version and a PS Vita version released in the next couple of years. Um, This game remarks the return of Michelle Ansel, who famously, of course, did not really do develop Rayman 3, and he eventually came off of the project during the span of the Rabbids. And now he's back for this game. It kind of looks like his work. It does. It plays like it, too. I think I I brought this up when we were going over Rayman 1, the original. Mm. Rayman Origins is like they're trying to do one again, but it's modern and fresh. And, you know, it it feels like a new platform or new style. Yeah. And the levels are very reminiscent of the levels from Rayman 1, which we'll get into. Uh, So... Technically speaking, this is the fourth main installment of the Rayman series. So if you want to call it Rayman 4, I guess you could. It's not really officially called that, but it is the fourth one. You're not wrong. Yeah. It is the fourth one. one, And it's the first game in that series since Hoodlum Havoc in 2003. eight years. It's been a long time since the mainline Rayman Mm -hmm. came out. So, Greg, I want to ask you. It had been a long time since Rayman. We'd done anything with Rayman. Like, Rayman 2 was really the last game we played and that was yep. in 99 how did this game get on yours and then my radar how okay even this, this is how i remember this yeah i feel like you and i have had this conversation a lot on the show we have to talk about who bought this and why we played it Probably. together yeah i think um it was i think this was in circa 2016 2017 or maybe yeah. a little bit before then 
Um, I it was one of these things where like GameStop was doing a holiday special where hey you, you know buy four or five games you get you know one game free or buy two get one free and I think I bought six games and Origins was one of them. Ah. I because we I missed this when it came out I didn't bother I didn't right. care that Rayman was coming out in 2011 you know we were in college we were cool yeah right? yeah we were playing Skyrim D- that <laughs> and then ten years later Skyrim's not cool to us and now Rayman's cool <laughs> yeah it's really funny how like like you know things kind of reverse on themselves That's right. Um, but anyway, I think in 2011, 2012, I didn't care that this came out. I'm pretty positive I bought this in the 2016 era ish. Kind of was it right around then? I think you're right because I don't remember playing this. You know, 2011, we were in college. I don't remember playing this while we were in college. I th- I don't think we did. I think you were you were moved out of our mom's house at this point. Ah, I think okay. you were. And I would come over every now and again to play this I game. I think so. I think is how that works. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so. Let's get into some gameplay a little bit because while it is reminiscent of Rayman 1, there's some there's some interesting aspects to it, I think. Uh, in the same vein, it is, a, it is a side-scrolling platformer, except it is a multiplayer game. And I would say it's the preferred way to play these games. For sure. I mean, so there's a couple of things I want I kind of want to say right yeah. off the bat, if that's okay. Of course. This is one of the games that I can... Okay, let's say you have someone over your house that doesn't really game, but they want to try it. Mm-hmm. This is actually the game that I show them mm. because the controls are very simple and easy to understand, but the game is actually really hard. Where How I consider this is, yeah, there's a run button, a jump button, and a punch button. And that's really all that you do. But the game does a really good job of getting faster and faster and expecting more and more from you. Um, What I also think is really cool is that if anything touches you, it's game over. But if you have a co-op buddy with you, if you get touched by an enemy, you become like a bubble. (laughs) And then like if you go near your co-op buddy and your buddy punches you, you get unbubbled and you're immediately back in the game. And that's pretty sweet. I think it's really fun. It's also a really, it's a really cute way to handle how hard the game is, Mm -hmm. where if you play with a buddy, yeah, you're going to die over and over and over. But if you keep, you know, getting your buddy out of the bubble, it's the the pace never really stops. No, that's actually a really great point you bring up. The pacing is excellent. And it's the pacing is not only excellent. They do a really good job of going from the game is slow and easy to the game is like it's difficult and fast paced, but you've got a handle on it because the controls are easy. Um, and I, what I think they do a good job of is you're very rarely out of the action. Mm-hmm. Even when you get a game over, there's no loading screen. Oh, you're nothing. immediately reloaded with a checkpoint. You're right back in. The checkpoints are relatively generous. There's, yeah. There might be a few throughout the game that are a little like, mm. but you're generally thrown right back into the action, generally pretty right close where you started. To, where, to where you died, where you game over it, however you want to call it. But generally, the gameplay of this, I mean, while it's incredibly simple, it's also incredibly effective. Yes. You know, it's kind of like those early Raymans, right? Like Rayman 1 and 2. Rayman 1 was, of course, expect incredibly hard, mm-hmm. but Rayman 2 is great. And, <clears throat> but they're also simple at their core, yeah, right? Yeah, very. There's not like a ton of controls, not no. a ton of things you have to do, but they make the most out of this very simple gameplay. I think before we move on to anything else, I do want to, yeah. there, there are some funny like brother moments that we always have. When <laughs> yeah. Should we bring this up now? Yeah, let's We do might it. as well. Where I, you and I had some really funny phrases when we play this game, because <laughs> there's some quirky gameplay elements that they don't explain to you, but they kind of happen naturally. Right. Or like if I jump and then you jump above me and I punch you, you go higher. That's right. <laughs> and so like there are some obstacles where we're like, I'll jump, Nick will jump, uh, uh, Nick will jump, I'll keep punching him. So he keeps going keeps up going and up. Higher. And I remember Nick and I, we, you just hear us yelling, like, give me the boost. Give me the boost. Yeah, give me the boost. <laughs> like, and then we would always call that the boost. <laughs> and we're not really sure if that's actual gameplay or it's like um, emergent content. <laughs> we're not really no. sure where I don't think you're supposed to do that, but maybe you are. I don't because I don't know how you'd beat this game single player. That's what I'm saying, too. I feel like this game solo is really this difficult. This game's got to be fucking brutal. I'm actually not sure if they do some sort of adaptive difficulty if you have two players. I don't think that's the case. No. But wow, yeah, this must be absolutely brutal to play as a single player. I mean, this is one of the most fun games that you and I have played side by side, but I don't really know what it would be like if it's one hit death and it's only me. It's got to be a lot slower. It's probably pretty slow and dare I say it may not be as good. It may not be as fun. If it's if it's single player. Yeah, yeah that's I true. Don't know. And like, I've always been so curious about, you know, using the boost as we call it. There's like, I don't want to call it friendly fire because you can't 
you know, you can't game over your sword. partner by punching them. Right. But you can hit them and they'll react to it. Yeah. Like if I accidentally hit you and you fall off the cliff, you will die. Yes. But and if I accidentally hit hit you up, you can go a little bit higher than normal to maybe grab something. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if the devs really intended multiplayer to do that. Maybe it's just an added benefit. I don't know. I, I, don't have, know no, I have no idea. But either way, it's great. It's never explained anywhere. You just kind of happen upon it and it's fantastic. So I know the gameplay is relatively simple. Is there anything else you want to say about it before we kind of jump into the, I'll call it story. The story in this game is pretty light, but I mean, no, I don't really think there's much. It's it's a platformer. You yep. you die in one hit, but with co-op, you can keep getting each other back and the pace doesn't really stop. And that's really all you need to know. Yeah, that's what that's I it. think. That's it. All right. So we'll move on to story and the levels you kind of get yourself into. Yeah, when sure. You're a Rayman quick Origins. overview here. Yeah. All right. So at the very beginning, uh, you start off as Rayman and Globox and a couple of teensies are hanging out with you. And you are sitting with our old friend from Rayman 2, Polocus. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they call him the Bubble Dreamer in this game, but it is oh, okay. the same guy. Maybe okay. they kind of rebranded him. I don't know. Yeah. Um, and and uh, he's uh, if you don't remember, um, from Rayman 2, Polocus is the guy you give the masks to to save the world. Mm -hmm. And now I guess he's your buddy. You mm -hmm. just kind of hang out and you know sleep by the snoring tree. However, you uh, Rayman snores a little bit too loud, and some flower picks up his snoring, which alerts... Uh, the world of the undead, also known as Land of the Livid Dead, which is the same place slash name as the one found in Rayman 3. Okay. A little continuity here, which is nice. And they attack. And that is the premise of the game. You have mm -hmm. to now defend the Glade of Dreams and the world from and these so undead you defend people. the Glade of Dreams by really just running really fast through paintings? That's right. And <laughs> I mean, pretty much. So basically... Uh, when in the initial segments, Rayman and his friends do fight back against these undead, but they lose and they're captured, but not by Robo Pirates, not not this time. Mm -hmm. Then Rayman does another great escape mm -hmm. where he escapes and sees these enemies who are now introduced as Dark Tunes that have captured um, the new sort of collectible in this game known as Electunes. Mm. They it's interesting. They function similarly to Lums from mm -hmm. the previous games, but Lums are still here. Yeah. They just do a different thing. Yeah. Which is interesting. Electoons also never come back again after this game, as yep. far as I'm aware. So mm -hmm. it's a little strange that they're included, but that's okay. Um, so then you run into Batia or Batilla. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. The nymph and her sisters, they are plunged into the Glade of Dreams and everything is chaos. So... This causes Polocus to have nightmares. And that is, they say that is the cause for all the bad things happening. Oh, okay. When he dreams, bad things happen in the Glade of Dreams. Got it. And so it's like Alan Wake? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> actually, it's actually, it's very Polocus similar. And, <laughs> and they actually reveal in this game that Polocus is the one who, um, who a bad dream actually made Jono from Rayman 2. Oh, interesting. That is, yeah, they kind of... Uh, uh, explain mm. that in this one, which is interesting. Isn't it like the Swamp of Bad Dreams is where, right? Yes. Or something like that? Yes. I forget what the level's called. Yep, but, pretty yep. much. So, essentially, Rayman and his friends are tasked by the magician, who was actually in Rayman 1. Mm -hmm. He was, he looked more like Rayman in that game, but now in this one, he's got rebranded. Yeah, into he's, looking he's a lot of rebranding. Yeah. <laughs> it's been eight years. <laughs> it's been a while. He's rebranded into more of a teensy looking guy instead of Rayman. Uh, which is totally cool. Um, and then our old friend Murphy is back as well to guide you along. And now, thankfully, Murphy is not his Rayman 3 yeah. incarnation. He's kind of back to the way he was in Rayman 2. Mm -hmm. Which, if you listen to our episode about uh, our last episode where we talked Rayman 3, we disparaged this version of Murphy quite heavily. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I was pretty glad to see that. Uh, we are not. So he's, so he's no longer a womanizer and a racist. No. And like, they dro he, he dropped that. He figured that out. That's right. Yeah. He went through a tough time, went through his edgy teenager phase. Yeah. But now he's back. He's mature mm -hmm. now. He matured through the bush years. That's right. right. Yeah. Oh my God. That's really funny. <laughs> uh, so essentially you go through all these worlds and your job is to save all the nymphs who then give you all these powers, power ups that you're, if you've played Rayman, you're familiar with like gliding, power up punches, all that good stuff. I do want to know, uh, to note the nymphs all have really funny wordplay names. Like you've got Helena handbasket, Hallelujah, and Annette a fish. That's pretty Donut's good. That's pretty good. Um, and is that like when you, um, 
when you sort of save each one, it, that's when the controls get more complicated, yes. right? Because at the beginning things. of the game, you can't glide when you start. Yes, that's true. That's kind of how they slowly teach you the gameplay too, and it's not very overwhelming. That's right. That's right. Yeah, you can basically only walk and jump at the beginning. As you save the nymphs, you get a little bit more mm -hmm. power A little bit ups, more to do. A little bit more to do, and that's when the levels start to, be get, start to get more complicated. Um, so the worlds are the gibberish jungle, Gormand land, the sea of serendipity, the mystical peak, and then you have the four kings, not to be confused with Dark Souls four kings. Funnily enough, they came out in the same year. They did come out the same year. Which is very interesting. Um, but thinking of like the four kings in Rayman style, like the Dark Souls mm -hmm. four kings would be kind of fun. It would be kind of yeah. fun. It, it all, I'm not saying it works in a similar way in this game, but it kind of does. Yeah, it's not, it's not too different. When the four kings unlock... It's basically you go to every one of the levels and fight a boss. Mm -hmm. So it does kind of become the four kings. There's some like maybe some, uh, some similar origins there. Yeah. Rayman origins. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. Mm -hmm. I like it. And then you finish off the game by going to the moody clouds. And if you unlock it, there is a secret level at the end where you go to the land of the livid dead. In the moody clouds, however, you discover that the magician, the guy who's been helping you all along, he turns traitor. Oh, there's a rug pull. He's been pulling the strings the entire time. Yeah. It's actually very funny um, when you find like his little, it's kind of like Wizard of Oz-esque. You go into his little chamber, you find yeah. out he's been doing everything. He has like Mr. Dark propaganda posters That's all funny. over his wall. That's really weird. <laughs> he has like, you know, I heart Mr. Dark or love Mr. Something all that sort of stuff just plastered everywhere. So essentially magician from Rayman one who was a good guy has turned evil mm -hmm. in this game and you must now defeat him in the moody clouds. But once you beat the, that final challenge, the credits roll, you beat them, his warship crashes and your characters resume their little slumber. They kind of just go back to taking a nap. And you know what? I, that's, that's great. That's it's all simple. we can really ask for, honestly going on adventure and then just wanting to go right to sleep. I, you know, let me bring up like um, one aspect of sort of how the gameplay brings you through the story, yeah. which I, I perhaps should have mentioned earlier. Yeah. So there's a little bit of a Mario 64 thing going on here mm. where in each level you have to save a blue. They're called teensies. Is teensies. That, yeah. So in, in each in each level, there's a certain amount of teensies that you can save. Not mm. all. They're not mandatory. Yeah. So it's, if you remember Mario 64, how you need a certain amount of stars mm -hmm. to go to the next level. Yes. You need a certain amount of total teensies saved. Uh, or a certain amount of lums, uh, both either, yep. to go to actually continue the levels. Mm -hmm. So it gives you not only some incentive to play them again, but it, you also you have to try. You can't just run through the levels and 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 just suck. Like <laughs> what I think yeah. is really kind of iconic in this game. There's some very iconic sounds. Yes, like when a teensy is near you, it, you you hear like this little squeaky guy yelling for help, mm -hmm. which is interesting. So. This game also does a lot of like little secret areas that are off camera or you have to get into these little, you know, crevices and little kind of places to find them. Yeah. So, you know, long story short here, um, when you go through these levels, you have to save a certain amount of teensies to get through the levels to see yeah, this ending. True. Yeah, that's true. And, but you don't need them all. No, you don't need all of them. And I'm glad you mentioned like collectibles, the teensies and all yeah. that. Um, there is one other collectible. It's called Red Skull Teeth. Mm -hmm. They're found through these treasure chests throughout the levels. If you collect... Uh, enough of them the final level the land of the livid dead will unlock it's not really part of the main story it's more of a secret level mm -hmm. where you fight a secret boss and then you save a secret nymph it's not not it's not the true final boss or yeah. anything it's just a secret and then it reveals a really cool credit roll where it kind of pulls a super smash brothers where you can interact with the credits Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, like, swing around on the credits, use them for platforming. I think that's awesome. Yeah. That is mm -hmm. really cool. It is very cool. Yeah. So that's really it with uh, Origins. Do you have anything, any other else you want to say about Origins before I move on to Rayman Legends? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think what's interesting about this game in terms of when we played it yeah. was... I think I back then, I think back in 2015, 2016, whenever mm -hmm. we played this, I think I said to you, this is some of the most I've laughed playing a game. Mm -hmm. Like, and not because it's stupid or right. like even keep on, there's like no, there's no like voice acting. No. There's barely any text either. Nope. It just I had so much fun just like laughing and jumping and and running oh, and, yeah. and punching. Where that's I it's it's kind of an intangible quality of the game. Where if you've 
I feel like a lot of gamers out there have heard that these games are good, but mm. haven't really played them. Where I would say, like, if you're looking for a couch co-op game, this is pro this is up there with the best ones of the past 10 years. I would agree. And I'm glad you said something about the humor, too, because we saw with Rayman 3, it got into some very, like... Like, not, not funny yeah, humor. borderline not funny, borderline very offensive humor. Yeah. But this game kind of took a return to form from like Rayman and Rayman 1 mm -hmm. where there's humor, but it's tasteful. Well, also I will say this too, like, mm -hmm. but it's the kind of humor where I, I'll call it emergent humor yeah. where you and I are laughing and having a good time playing yeah. it. So now we think it's funny. Yeah, yeah, right? exactly. So um, and I'm really, I'm going to go back to this too. I'm really glad you mentioned in the beginning that this game wasn't really on our radar for a while. Yeah. Because uh, this game did not do very well at first. Yep. It was the kind of game that did better over time. Yep. Which it took I thought a couple was really of years. interesting. Yeah, it took a few years for this game to really find its footing. It's gotten po uh, popular ever since it became like free on gold. Yeah. It's really interesting because they still planned a sequel despite sales maybe not being exactly what they wanted. Um, according to sources, it did okay, okay enough for them to make a sequel, but it didn't really get popular until some years later. It makes me feel kind of weird. Yeah. So Rayman Origins didn't do super well, yeah. but they still made Legends. They did. But Legends did awesome, and now they've done nothing. I know. Which is why we're about to talk about Legends. That's right. right? <laughs> Yeah, so we'll jump into Rayman Legends. We'll save grades uh, for, for the after we talk about them both. Yeah, we'll save grades for that part. So let's talk about Rayman Legends. Um, it released in 2013, so not a very long development cycle for this. No. So like, like I said, they saw the initial sales of Rayman Origins and still wanted to make this game. That's Which, interesting. It is interesting. And you know what? I applaud them for it. I feel like it was kind of a passion project. Like they really liked it. Well, we should say this too. Like yeah. if this, this is 2013. 2013. Really? Yep. yep. Wow. I feel like that's kind of the end for Ubisoft for me. Mm. It's kind of right there, right? Yeah. Right? Mm. I think Am I you're wrong? Right. You're kind of like right. Like Assassin's Creed's 07, like yep. 2 is 09, yep. Origins and Legends 11, 13. Then yep. it kind of becomes a disaster the past yeah. 10 years. Yeah, it's like Rayman Legends was the last thing holding back the Ubisoft disaster. Well, actually, I'll, I'll say this because I'm never going to get another chance. Okay. Like Child of Light was pretty good. Oh, yeah. Uh, but anyway, okay. that's all we're going to say about it. <laughs> That's all um, we're going to say about Child of Light. It was similar time. It was like 2014. Never going to go back to Riley's Child of Light, Rayman. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, like I said, released in 2013, and it is a direct sequel to Rayman Origins. It literally follows up the story of that game. It has very similar gameplay. Um, the main difference here is there is a new uh, barbarian character named Barbara. Yep. That you can now uh, control of with they're using with the with Rayman, Globox, the Teensies, whoever, whoever else you want to... Uh, characters you want to control and a welcome addition is murphy is now semi-playable yeah if mm -hmm. you're playing on the wii u he can be controlled by using the gamepad by another person That's kind cute. of as like a not really a person like like a party member but mm -hmm. kind of a guy who maybe helps out every now and again and there are a few puzzles where you need to utilize murphy's assistance yep which is great love seeing murphy in there um, a definitive edition of this game came out on the Switch in 2017, mm -hmm. and I feel like even though the definitive edition didn't really add a ton to the game, I feel like this game really popped off after that was released. I feel like a lot of people talk about it now. Yeah, I, I don't know what it is. This yeah. game seemed to grow into multiple platforms and kept growing. Yeah, and um, it received... Basically worldwide critical acclaim. Yes. Like high, like low 90s on all the reviews. It's sites. well deserved. Well deserved and... Um, and like, well done by by the guys for making a very good sequel. Because we game. haven't even really talked about this with yep. Origins and Legends. Just so the audience knows, they're very similar. They are very similar but games. We shouldn't. It shouldn't be understated. Like these games look amazing too, That's true. and they also yes. run like very. I don't know what the right word for this is. They run so smooth, and mm -hmm. they get so. I'm gonna quote. Let me quote our friend John. Yeah. Where remember? I think you were there for this. We were playing one of the, either the final levels of Origins or one of the final levels of Legends. Yeah. And he said, "My brain cannot process how fast information is coming on the screen." <laughs> That's right. That's yeah. right. He did say that. It is impressive, like how well optimized it is and how awesome it looks. No, you're right. You're right. We definitely should have mentioned that. It's like not only is it really fast and really. And the pacing just never really lets up. It looks good doing it. And it's it well never, optimized. Yeah, and it's very well optimized. And the reason I'm bringing it up now is mm -hmm. Legends, and only are they similar games, Legends kind of doubles down mm -hmm. on what Origins did. And it's now like they, they, they put their sort of 
foot to the gas pedal of visually crazier. Yeah. Like it's even faster. Like, and it, it's still successful and not overwhelming. Yeah. Because some of the effects that you see, like the dragon shooting fire, the things flying at you all the yeah. time, it's incredibly effective. Yeah. And it's like, it's kind of scary. It's like, oh, got to jump, got to jump. Let's hey, go. Everybody, you hear like when you put a AAA budget into a platforming game, <laughs> it, it, it's good. <laughs> I know, right? Wait a minute. Yes. Before, I don't want to take this too far That's off topic. Okay. Are there any other AAA platforming games? Is this the only one? I mean, am I crazy? I'm talking like Mario, Mario, but I mean, aside from like Mario, okay, uh, like okay, third party AAA platforming games. I'll make it even harder. Oh man, none. I don't think there's too Especially many in the past ten years. I mean, Crash if Bandicoot got a re-release. That's true. That's if you're not named right. Mario, there are not very many. No, I mean, there's the other like second tier ones, like the Crash Bandicoots yeah. of the world, but like not really. I haven't we haven't seen too much of that recently. That's true. No, but you're right. I don't think we see too many of these. Uh, third party or even triple A platformers these no, days. No, pr- platform games that get a ton of budget. Yeah, no way. Keep really. mind, this is also 10 years ago. Yes, that's true. So anyway. And honestly, this game doesn't look like it came out almost 10 years no, ago. No, because the art style is really wonderful. Yeah, but actually, is it literally 10 years ago? I believe so. It is literally 10 years ago. The it art is. style is wonderful. It runs great. It When you play this game, you don't feel like you're playing a game from 2013. No way. Um, yeah, you're right. Uh, where did you want to go next with, with Legends? Yeah, so um, we already kind of talked about gameplay and art. The gameplay it's is largely the same. Is largely very similar. I mean, I think that it's really hard. Do you think that's a detriment to this game where they didn't really change the gameplay at all? It's almost a, the same experience. I don't want to say the same. Yes but and no. Similar. I'm going to bring up one positive now because yeah. I do want to bring it up at some point. This game is more or less the same as Origins. Yeah. However, mm-hmm. they did do a cool thing. I, I'd like to bring it up now, if that's yeah. okay. Let's do it. There are a few levels that are actually music and audio based. Yes. Which are real. it's really, really tasteful. Um, so I have in here that I believe there are six yeah. uh, music based levels. I believe you're right. And what's really interesting um, is that you jump and platform to the the rhythmic musical moments of the songs. It's almost like a rhythm game. Kind of. At that point. Like, you know, if you jump on a platform, a cymbal crashes. Yeah. Like, if you're sliding down a thing, a shredding guitar solo plays in yeah. rhythm to the sliding. Yeah. And what I think is interesting is, I don't know if you know this, but mm. some of the songs are not original. Some of the songs oh. are are from, I'm going to call it real life. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, like, that's right. That's right. Like some of them you are play parodies. Black Betty. Yeah. Like you, you <laughs> yes. play an acoustic version of Eye of the Tiger. That's, there's, wait, really? Yeah, you do. That's awesome. Which is interesting. That's and awesome. And some of the songs are original. Some of them okay. are not. Some of them are, you know, licensed, I that's guess awesome. is the word. Sure. But they're all, I just, I don't know. I don't know what it is where it's just, it, this game is so tasteful and so, what's the word? I feel like you got to go like, like a for aesthetic here absolutely for like visual and sound i think it i mean origins has decent sound but i think they really took it to the next level with legends especially with these almost rhythmic like rhythmic levels levels or yeah that's a good way to rhythm game levels yeah and you know they tend to be the levels that we show people when come over and they want to yeah you're like hey i want to show you rayman legends let's do um what what was it castle Castle rock Rock. castle rock i think that's the black betty one yes classic rock class Castle Rock <laughs> is yeah. the Black Betty one, and honestly, it, it from what I from what I uh, know about this game, they're also not that difficult. No, they're almost faster yeah. than the regular levels too. Because would you call them on rails? Yes, a little bit, right? Yeah, the music levels are on rails. Yeah, yeah. where there's something either chasing you or the left side of the screen is going to yeah. get you unless you keep uh, moving to the music. Yeah, it's cool. It's really cool. It's really cool. Wherever you want to go next. All right, this. so what's um? Let's hop into the story again. Same as Origins. Story's pretty light here. 30-second overview yeah. here. Yeah, we're, we're not going to get into too much here. So, uh, basically, Rayman and his friends are awoken by Murphy after uh, 100 years. So, it's been 100 years since Origins. They've, okay. They've been sleeping for 100 years. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could have told me it was 20 and I would have believed you, but whatever, I guess. Um, the Glade of Dreams, again, is a disaster. And it's overrun with nightmares and monsters. Um, they've again created these elaborate worlds in the Glade of Dreams, and they've wrecked havoc by capturing every teensy again. Um, and the dark magician from before, who apparently uh, he got away uh, in the last and lasting bits of legend of origins, rather. And now he has turned to uh, five dark, te- dark teensies instead of the one dark magician. Mm-hmm. And these five teensies have gone on to make five different worlds and they're causing havoc not hoodlum havoc not hoodlum not havoc hoodlum. teensy havoc yeah teensy havoc yeah. yeah rayman legends teensy havoc and yes. they're wrecking havoc all over the world um again this is starring our our good buddy uh Polocus, um because he again his dreams are to blame for a few of the bad things going on 
Um, and now Rayman and his friends are tasked with going inside these worlds. You mentioned Mario 64 earlier. This game really takes a page out of Mario 64 where you are literally jumping into paintings. Yep. <laughs> it's um, it's almost what I would say. OK, could you have done something a little different and not jumping in paintings? But it's different enough where I'm like, OK, you know what? It's fine. But it is very similar. I mean, to be honest, it's exactly the same. It's exactly the same. <laughs> it's like the only difference is that the paintings are on easels and not just embedded into the wall. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I said here it takes inspiration from Mario 64, but maybe it was a little bit more it's than It's actually exactly the same. Actually the same game. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, the one thing I really like, well, the one thing, I like a lot of things about the worlds. They tend to mimic popular like media. So, for example, the level Teensy's in Trouble, it resembles like your classic knights and dragons yeah. kind of mm -hmm. fantasy. Um, the next level, Toad Story. It sounds like Toy Story to me. I don't think they modeled it after that, but it kind of mm -hmm. sounds like it. And there's a lot of like beanstalks. So it kind of reminds me of Jack and the Beanstalk. Oh, and sure. Fairy tales. They base it off like fairy tale worlds and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, the third level here is called uh, Fiesta de los Muertos where it's a, a food-based level, but it's more of like a Mexican theme. Interesting. Which is pretty interesting. And mm -hmm. the main enemies are luchadors. That's great. Which I find pretty great. Um, and the, this is actually, this is the level, now that I remember, this is the level that ends with Eye of the Tiger. I think you're right. Yes, this one's great. Um, the next one is probably my favorite title of all of the ones. It's called 20,000 Lums Under the Sea. It's pretty good. Which is amazing. And all the levels kind of, they remind me of these old like spy movies, heist movies where you got to avoid all these traps. Yep. And I think there's even monsters or enemies wearing spy gear. I think you're correct. Which is, maybe they're little sharks. I believe they're mm -hmm. little sharks. It's really cool. Um, and the last one is a level for us is the Greek level. Yep. It's Olympus Maximus. Very funny. <laughs> very funny. Um, it's inspired by art architecture from the Greeks. Sure. There's even a labyrinth level yep. in there inspired obviously by the Minotaur and all that good stuff. Um, and after you get through Olympus Maximus, you've taken out all of the little teensies and uh, for, for some reason they get sent to the moon. Okay. I, I don't really know what happens to them there. I, they, they just get sent to the moon. They just get sent to the moon and that's this kind of over. Okay. Then after you finish the Olympus Maximus level, you kind of just get like a musical number. And, and then that's it. And that's over. It's over. The game ends. Yeah. Um. Again, like the last game, like Origins, there is a secret level where if you unlock enough teensies, you unlock um, the true final level, which is again, the land of the livid dead. Yeah. And then you can go through the secret bosses and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's really it for the story. It's a bit light, just like Origins. But I feel like the story in these games is really a vessel for you to see all the colorful levels to run through. Oh, yeah. I, I like to call them an excuse plot. Nice. Where it's like, yeah. we we made all these really cool levels, but now we need a reason for you to go to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah, yeah. I, I think both Origins and Legends kind of do that. Honestly, if you're listening to this and you've done a deep dive into the lore of Rayman Origins and Legends, please let us know. Yeah, but um, I don't think anyone will do that. No, <laughs> I don't think there's too much to dive into. No, no. Um, so that's really it for Rayman Legends. Again, the gameplay is very similar. Aesthetically, it's awesome. Do you have any final thoughts on Rayman Legends? Um, I think we should maybe do final thoughts on Origins and Legends together yeah, because sure. they're essentially the same game. They're very similar. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's, you know, we, we haven't really like been super effusive of our praise, yeah. like in the past 30 minutes or yeah, so. Yeah. But I, you know, I, I'm very high on both of these. Mm. It's one of these things where I feel like these are very understated games. Yeah. And do like, do we dare like calling them like underrated it, commercially? Maybe. But I mean, critically, no. I mean, Legends is very well acclaimed. Yeah. Um, hmm. I mean, to be honest, like my final final thoughts on this duo of games is it's some of the most fun co-op I've played in the past decade. And I really recommend everyone should play them. And also, it's kid-friendly. It's adult-friendly. That's true, too. Yep. Um, you could play it with anyone. People who don't, who don't really game and controls are difficult for them. You could play this with them, too. And that doesn't mean it's easy. No. Like I, I said in my notes that this game is approachable, but that doesn't mean it's easy. It really isn't. And and nope. I think it's very engaging. What's the only flaw that it's an excuse me plot? But does that matter? <laughs> Honestly, I give it a pass because when I play a game like this, I'm not really looking for really the care. plot. I don't really care about that. Yeah. Uh, again, I'll evoke what our, our co-host Riley tends to say. As long as the plot doesn't get in the way of it, sometimes you can kind of excuse that sort of thing. Yeah. Like if they had really tried to shoehorn a plot 
like dialogue and info dumping and everything into this game. I think it may have gotten a little tiresome, but they didn't do that. They just kind of let the game be on its own. I mean, I think like the one sentence I have for these games, it's just a faster Mario. <laughs> I mean, and I wrong. think I think at the time I was telling people this is Rayman right now is better than what Mario is right now. I would agree. I think these games, they really grew into popularity. Like, man, when did Super Mario like new brothers? Same time, like 4 2014. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think those games are great. They're OK. You know what? That, yeah. I'm glad you brought that up because yeah. we have to really frame Rayman Origins and Legends about when they came out, which yeah. is 2011 to 2014 ish. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I think at that time, Rayman was outdoing Mario when it came to platforming because we played that like new Super Mario Bros. Wii yeah. U or whatever. It's very slow mm -hmm. and plodding. Yeah. And I'm not saying it's not good, but I think Rayman Origins and Legends, for me, the, I just thought they were immensely better. They were definitely, for me, I guess for us, definitive platformer of those few years. I think so. And I think they really did overtake Mario spotlight when it came to that. At least until, you know, Odyssey and all that. Above, yes, of course. But... It's really strange because I, I want to call them underrated, but I don't know. I mean, they, commercially, yeah. Critically, no. Yeah. But it's like, man, I just wish more people knew about them. I feel like the internet knows I feel a like lot everyone about knows about them and no one plays them. Yeah, which is yeah. kind of sad. It's kind of... I don't know anyone who's beaten them. We've beaten both. That's right. Unfortunately, I think that's kind of what Rayman is. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people know about them, but not a lot of people have played or beaten the games. Correct. Unfortunately. All right. Sh I, should you want to go into grades and we'll move on? Yeah, sure. Do you want to I mean... Go this might sound too flippant of me, but I might go back to back A's. Yeah. What? How do wow. you feel? So my only, I don't have an issue with these games, but I'm go like, ahead. I don't know. I always struggle with like a game, a sequel just being the same. Now you're not wrong. It's, they didn't really do anything innovative. Well, I shouldn't say that either because they have the music levels and their but it's aesthetics. it's six levels out of like a hundred. I know. I know. And we should mention too, if you play Legends, you actually do unlock access to play all of Origins worlds as well. Which is interesting. Which is pretty cool. But like, man, oh, I'm trying to think, though, but yeah. like it's an excuse me plot or yeah. an excuse plot. Yeah. But what the goal? How do I put this? I'm trying to frame my grade about what the what the goal of the game was and yeah. what was their thesis statement. Mm -hmm. And to me, they crushed it. Right. I feel I, like I'm never right. this easy. This is this is funny because you just use the word thesis statement when talking about Rayman Origins. Correct. I think it find amazing. But you're right, though, because they set out to do a to do a goal and they accomplished I'm it never well. this easy no like, the only other quote unquote issue I might have with them is that playing solo is probably infinitely less fun than multi that's true but I don't know but for me that we played this multiplayer the whole time and like you said earlier playing origins and legends co but what's like couch co-op we didn't yeah. play this online we played couch co-op yeah was some of the most fun i've had and we've played a lot of co-op games okay i'm gonna years. extend i'm gonna extend an olive branch to you here Ooh, okay. i would if you would do this i'm yes. gonna go a on origins and a minus legends because it's a little tired honestly i think you're right yeah where origins really set the groundwork and i yeah. think it deserves a lot more praise than what it gets you know what I've got a great example. Okay. Another game we played co-op, Divinity. Yeah. Divinity 1, Divinity 2. Yes. Divinity 1 really laid the groundwork, but nobody played it. Yeah. Everybody, well, you know. Everyone, they Div did. Divinity 2, way more popular than, Div than Divinity 1. Of course, it's a great game, but people kind of ignore the amazingness that is Divinity 1. Well, you should be clear. It's Divinity Original Sin I'm 1 sorry. and 2. Nobody, <laughs> nobody it. played Divinity I'm 1 sorry. and 2. Oh, I'm nobody sorry. Nobody played those. That's right. I'm but, sorry. No, it's but you're exactly sin. right. Where this is not the Divinity episode. <laughs> but like you and I, well, there's also the same era, 2015. Yes, that's true. So good year for co-op for us. Very. Um, it's one of these things where we, we, we like we wax poetic about Divinity Original Sin 1 and no one cares. Yeah. But then the entire internet played Divinity Original Sin 2. And on and then on goddamn GameCube, we're trying to convince you it's not as good. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what we fucking do, though. Yeah, we're not saying that Legends is not as good as we are. Are we? Uh, I guess we kind of are. <laughs> <laughs> I like how we just said, dude. The music levels are amazing. This game is so thoughtful. It's not as it's good. not as good. Well, it's, I, it's you know what it is. It's just there's a little bit of you did this 18 months ago. It's like you already did this. It's the same game. Yeah, but you kind of made it better. Which is weird. I know. But you know what it is? Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, I'm not going to call it $60 DLC because it is so thoughtful. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But I, I want to be done with this. I'm going yep. A on Origins and A minus on Legends. Yep. And you just need to tell me whether you agree or not. I agree with that. I mean, I can't, I don't think I can give this game any low, these games any lower than A's or A minus because no. of how much fun we have. There's no with problem them. with them. No, no. So, great. okay. Let's move on to, I'm, 
So I'm not sure if the next thing is good or bad or ugly. Oh, we have to say, oh, Rayman Origins Legends is definitely good. Definitely yeah, good. Definitely yes, good. Definitely. We got to make sure we get that out there. That's in the good category. Yeah, Raving Rab is bad, but uh, Origins Legends, good. Yeah. All right. Next we're getting into is good. Yeah. It's so good. We're talking about Weirdly some enough. weird shit next, which is, <laughs> can I tell you what's really funny? <laughs> yeah, I actually don't really know what the actual name of these games are. I, I awesome. call them like, like Mario Rabbids. It's a tactics game. What is it actually called? <laughs> All right. So we are moving on to Mario and Rabbids, a very strange partnership. Um, the first game is called Kingdom Battle. Okay. And the second game released uh, in 2022 is called Sparks of Hope. Now, this fir the first game, Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle, is one of the most surprising games I've ever played. And I think a lot of people would agree with me that it was so surprisingly good. Mm -hmm. Every, I'm pretty sure everybody thought this game was going to suck. People thought it would be like a shoo-in crappy, like tie-in Mario and, and Ubisoft make money game. Right. No, but it's the opposite. It made no money. <laughs> And is really good. You don't want to know why it made no money. Because it's a tactics game on a grid. I mean, ouch, but yes. <laughs> the other reason it made no money, this game's always on sale. You're by right. The way. If you ever want to play it, Kingdom Battle is always on sale for like less than 10 bucks. Interesting. It's great. They on, I'm going to say, before you even say anything about yeah, the I've game. I've said nothing about you it. You've said nothing <laughs> about it. I'm going to give you a marketing idea. Okay. They should have called this... <laughs> Oh, I can't them saying this. What saying? They should have called this Mario Tactics featuring <laughs> rabbits. Because if you called it Mario Tactics, everyone would buy it because it's Mario. And then you then you figure out it's a tactics game with rabbits. Because the rabbits aren't even in the title. They're, they may be on the box art somewhere, but you don't tell them anything about the rabbits. They just it's show Mario up. Mario Tactics. <laughs> you know some dude in marketing thought about that. We're going to call it that for the rest of the show. That's right. All right, keep but going. then Ubisoft was like, you got to have the rabbits in there. Right. You got to have the title. It's like, fine. I guess give us a quick overview of these yep. games because we're not going to say too much. No one no. cares about them. Hey, listen, I care about them. Kind of. Kind okay. of. <laughs> anyway, so I played um, Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle kind of on a whim. I got it as a gift and I was like, it wasn't for me, was it? No. no, no, it was not. Not you. Not you. I think I'd remember that. Yeah, no, it wasn't from you, but I did get it as a gift. And you know what? I've said this before on the show. If it has a grid, I'm probably going to play it at some point. We've Yeah, we've said that yep. many times. Yeah. And so, and this game fits the, fits the category. So Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle is a tactical shooter. Yes. <laughs> Which is very weird to say. It's a grid-based tactical shooter featuring, featuring Mario. Featuring Mario. And it, I, the weirdest comparison I have is it plays kind of like XCOM. It plays exactly like XCOM. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it is exactly like XCOM. And all of the characters, Mario characters included, have guns. <laughs> it is really bizarre. Um, so essentially, it stars uh, Genius Girl, who is a huge Super Mario fan, who has accidentally merged the worlds of Rabbids and Mario together with her device called the Super Merge. Okay. Um, Rabbids invade the Mushroom Kingdom because the worlds have merged together. And now Mario has to team up with Rabbids who have taken, I don't want to say clones, but they've taken on the appearance of other Mario characters, mm -hmm. such as Rabbid Luigi, Rabbid mm -hmm. Peach, all that good stuff. And throughout the game, you gain a small team and fight as a team of three, um, always including Mario. And then the other two characters are of your choosing. Mm -hmm. It's actually super cool because every character has their own skill tree. Oh my God. You level up, you have skill trees. Every character is so different. Like you, um, Luigi is a sharpshooter. Wow. Yeah. So he's a long distance sniper. And, <laughs> and uh, Rabid Mario, who is literally a rabid in Mario's overalls, is like this big guy who just goes up and punches people. Can we... We should yep. make it clear. Yep. I don't believe Rayman makes an appearance in either one of these games. Rayman is not in Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Yeah. Rayman is in the sequel in a very recently released DLC. Yeah, so he's not. He's basically like, not in the game. Basically no, not no. in it. Can you uh, imagine like being Rayman on the sidelines and there's a Mario tactical shooter and and it. featuring Rabbids and you're not in it? Oh, do dude. you want to be in it? If you you're know, Rayman? I that, don't know. That's a good lead in. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> anyway, just a few more, a little bit more about this game, because I, I do think more people should play the Mario and Rabbid series. I think they are definitely worth your time. You're the only one who played them. I so. think I might be the only if you played this. Let us know, please. Either of them. Please, please let me know. I need to know somebody else who played this. Yeah. The only person I know who played it is uh, Josh. 
who we played some multi I played some multiplayer with. Got it. Okay. Yes, this game has multiplayer. Um, so I'll say just to cap it off, these games are actually very tactically satisfying. Um, I wouldn't say the game is hard. Well, I say it plays like XCOM. It's not as mercilessly difficult as XCOM. It is still a Mario game. But it combines some really nice RPG elements with the skill trees, a nice party system where every single character plays so differently that you could go through the game multiple times with different setups and you'd have a very different experience. And I will also say there's some good laughs. They... They kind of took some cues from Origins, Legends, and games after Rayman 3 that this kind of humor is really the way to go with Rabbids. While yes, they still cause trouble, they're still these meddlesome little guys, all the humor is very tasteful. And I found myself, I was laughing while I was playing this game at their antics and at all the random stuff that happens during it. They may be a bit over the top, but I enjoyed my experience with them. Um, just really quickly, Mario and Rabbids Sparks of Hope is the sequel to Kingdom Battle. It plays very similar, similarly to Kingdom Battle. So if you like that one, you'll very likely enjoy Sparks of Hope as well. That was very recent, released in October 2022. And uh, its last DLC, which we are, which we just mentioned, came out pretty close to the time of this recording, which of course brings back one of our favorite dudes, Rayman. Hell yeah. So, um... Speaking of what you said earlier, Greg, about think if you are a Rayman sitting on the sidelines, uh, we can now imagine maybe what went through Rayman's mind and what that did to his mental state <laughs> as we get into what is probably the ugly part of our discussion. Greg, take it away. Okay, so the internet was very mad about this. And so, <laughs> so I'll, I'll say this, like this is like one of the few points where the internet and goddamn GameCube are aligned on this. That never happens. It doesn't happen that often. <laughs> where right now we're going to talk about something called Captain Laserhawk Blood Dragon Remix. That sounds like an AI title. It's the stupidest <laughs> shit ever. Like, dude, yeah. it's funny. I'm totally disparaging it. I know people worked really hard on it. I know. So here we go. Yeah. Captain Laserhawk Blood Dragon Remix. There's a reason why <laughs> we're talking about it. So it, it's an animated series made by I. I uh, it's a Ubisoft series. It's yep. like their their media portion of their company, their television mm -hmm. movie sure. kind mm -hmm. of faction of Ubisoft. Yep. So we'll just go really quickly here about why we're talking about this. <laughs> yep. So we, as we said, Rayman had not been in a game. It's now been 10 years. Mm -hmm. And so, however, he is now in a television show. <laughs> and the reason why everyone is mad is what we're about to get into, mm. where here, Captain Laserhawk is an alternate history that takes place in the year 1992. Okay. Uh, Earth is now called Eden. It's a dystopian uh, technoc... I don't even know how to pronounce this. A technocracy? Technocracy. Yeah, it's wow. like a like a the technical so, with C R A C Y at the so end. It's technocracy. So the world is controlled by technology. Technology. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. And it's it, everything's controlled by a mega corporation. Mm -hmm. It's inhabited by, um, I guess, animals and people. But the animals are like Rayman characters. Like, okay. Yeah. The, the long story short, the the story is loaded with Rayman. Uh, excuse me, with Ubisoft side characters. Okay. Yep. Like Jade is in it. Like, oh. and there's some Assassin's Creed stuff in mm -hmm, it. Like, mm -hmm. there's that kind of stuff. Yep. And so. Um, I'll say this, the, the phrase or the, the catch line for the show is forget what, you know, embrace the remix. Oh, and God. so my response to that is fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And we're the reason why my response is fuck you. This is a prepared statement. Oh, okay. And I said, this is it. By that, I mean, this is in my notes for the, our preparation for this. All right. This is the horrible timeline where Ubisoft thinks the crass and raunchy content from Rayman three is the shit that people want. No. And this is, we're getting to the, the drum roll of why people are mad about this. Mm -hmm. And we're also mad about this. So Rayman is in this show. He's a newscaster, but he's also an alcoholic and a cocaine user. <laughs> wait, wait, this I don't know about the cocaine. Yeah. Oh my god. This is not a joke. Like oh I want god. Nick, we need to be very serious. Oh, sorry, serious face. Rayman okay. has some serious um vices, substance abuse vice okay. yep. substance abuse issues in yep. this show. Okay. And it's probably some of it's the stupid idea. <laughs> so here we go. So Rayman is voiced by this person named David Menken. I guess he's okay. done a ton of voice work. He's done he's been in a bunch of films as well. His name sounds familiar. So he he just played Barnabas Tharmer in Final Fantasy that's 16. That's where I know it's him. That guy. Okay, yeah. Okay. He was also Luke in Lego Star Wars. But that's Rayman's voice? Yeah, in the show. 
Whoa. Okay. So we're going to go through some, some stuff really quickly about mm. why I guess the internet and goddamn GameCube thinks uh, this is a very distasteful, I guess, portrayal of <laughs> Rayman. Rayman very frequently says words like fuck and Wait, really? and motherfucker oh and, my God. and other adult language content. Oh my God. There is... A, <laughs> I'm laughing. I can't even get through this. Oh these, these remarks are prepared and I can't really get through this. <laughs> There's this. And I want to make sure our audience knows I watched this. Yeah. And I, watched, getting, I watched this episode. We're getting Greg's live reactions. Basically. I watched, almost I watched this about an hour ago. Right. This is almost <laughs> live reaction from so, Greg after watching this show. There's a scene of where Rayman is shooting guns and bloodily like killing people and bodying people there's what? one cute moment where he does throw his fist at a guard oh, thank so you they okay. get a little bit of it okay all right and it, it's some kind of assassin's creed tie-in where he's killing like assassin's creed fascists and he's literally shooting them it's bloody and, and weird and so we're getting to the cocaine part <laughs> so the there is oh a God. scene where like it's a very iconic almost like um like uh mobster movie scene where rayman like so, like suddenly like picks his head up from a table and oh. he's covered in cocaine Jesus. like he he does like he does like a like a bump of coke it's really <laughs> fucking weird. he's doing lines off of murphy or something and so there's another really like weird part oh, no. where like rayman i guess i guess the plot of this is rayman is he's going to be replaced by like an ai version of rayman where the ai okay. version of rayman wears like a nice suit and he's like a really good newscaster but the Rayman in real life is like this very like worn down mm. like substance abuser. Okay. There's a scene where Rayman is in his apartment and I'm not kidding. He's eating sushi off a cow creature woman's ass. Oh, I've, I've seen the screenshot. Where yeah, like, okay. I think she's a sex worker and he says huh. he says a bunch of F-bombs and is, and is eating sushi off her butt. And so <laughs> I don't have a lot more to report uh, here. <laughs> I have I have a lot of questions. So but. I feel like what's going to happen is our audience is is going to be like, "What the fuck?" And yeah. that's what I said. Or half our audience who are like the anime fans would be mm -hmm. like, "Dude, no, the show is actually about blah 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 oh, blah blah." Sure. And okay. so here's the thing. Here's what I want to say. Rayman has not been in the game in ten years. Yeah. There's been a Mario tactic shooting game with Rabbids, and Rayman is excluded. Yep. And the first thing that Rayman does is he's in a show where he's doing bumps of coke <laughs> off and, a cow and lady. shooting people with guns. Ah. Uh. And that's where we are in 2023 with Rayman. With Rayman, it's where. Here's the thing, though. Okay. I'm gonna give you. I have no more on this. This is it. <laughs> okay. This is it. I'm gonna give you this. It's possible that we're headed towards a Rayman revival. And I'm going to tell you why. All right. Because we just had Rayman DLC for Mario Tactical Shooter. Okay. This show just came out two months ago with yep. Rayman in it. Rayman is sort of peeking around again. Okay. And it's possible we're going to get some more Rayman content. I don't have any faith that, that Ubisoft is going to make another 3D platformer Rayman game mm -hmm. because they just don't make good games anymore. <laughs> so, and everyone knows that. Like yep. everyone like listen to what I'm saying and in in internalize it. Yep. You okay. know, I'm right. We like, know right like, right. I, like um, you know, I hope you guys really like the online looter shooters they've been making. Ugh. Like, fuck you. Watch Dogs was so good. <laughs> fuck you. It's really bad. <laughs> anyway, so Nick, I do want to talk about one other thing before we wrap, which yep. is there was a lot of rumors that Rayman was going to be in Smash and they didn't do it. <sighs> I so hate that. There isn't much to say about this. I believe Rayman, did Rayman become like a trophy in the game? Yeah, he's a trophy side thing. Yeah, but they never made him to a character. So I, I before, like this has now gone on like a delirious, like cocaine, like yep. bump Rayman rant. Yep. So here's what's going to happen. Okay. Like we're going to do coke right now. Okay. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> That's you got funny. the sushi? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what I want to say is where we are in 2023 with Rayman yep. is 10 years ago, he was in a very tasteful, almost reboot of the franchise. Yep. Um, and then he was left out of Rabbids Mario. Yep. And then he was brought back in a television show very distastefully. Yep. And he was left out of Smash as well. Yes. So what I'm going to ask you before we close Ooh. is like, do you think we're ever going to get another Rayman entry beyond what I just said? Where clearly I don't think we're going to. But they keep teasing Rayman content, they as in Ubisoft. So say whatever you want before we hit pause here and end this. Okay, so I do actually have a little bit of faith that we're going to get some Rayman content. I do. Like you said, they've been teasing it. Rayman, I mean, okay, so a question about the show. 
Is Ray Rayman the main character of the show? No, he's portrayed as not quite a villain, like an anti-hero. I'm not going to say Joel from The Last of sure, Us, but okay. it's a good analogy, I guess, because yeah. is he a good guy but does bad things? Okay. Either that one, it's kind of. Is he a prominent character on the show? Yeah, he's the newscaster for the world. Okay, so he's a, he's got a lot of he's screen He's a time. prominent character. Okay, so he's... They're showing him a lot of Rayman. But like what I'm worried about is they're okay. showing a lot of Rayman, but in a distasteful, like bad light, or I should say distasteful and bad for fans who like him. Listen, I, when I said I had faith about there being another Rayman you game. You didn't tell me you were going to like what they were exactly. going to make. Exactly. I didn't say it was going to be good. No. It could be another Rayman 3. Okay. This is my true thoughts about what we're going to see with another Rayman game. If anything, I think it will be a very simplistic watered down 3d experience i think it'll be a like an arcade game i think not you're, those you're are not bad wrong. but it's not going to be like origins or legends i don't think they'll really top you've those you've now become me where you use arcadey as a disparaging term in that last episode i literally said i wasn't going to do it and then i just did it now you just did literally it. happened last week anyway yeah anyway i i just don't see them recapturing that magic do we know if uh, Michelle Ansel is back? Is he still there with Ubisoft? Is he still making Rayman content? That I'm not I wish aware I of. looked that up. I'm not aware that he is. If he is still involved with Rayman, I have hope. <sighs> if he's not, though, because we saw what happened when he wasn't involved. We got Rayman 3, and then we got a lot of rabbits. Yeah. Then we got, we a got lot Rayman of... 3, then no Rayman at all. You're right. Yeah. Then no Rayman. So... I mean, do you have anything else to say? Because I have one final line to like end us unless you have anything else. My final thing to say is Rayman has had a very interesting history. I feel like he's had one of the more interesting video game character histories right. that, I, that I can recall off the top of my head. And I kind of feel bad for him. Yeah. Honestly, I think he deserves better than being some coked out substance abuser in a animated TV On show. On CNN. On CNN. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess that's really all I have to say. I do like Rayman as a character and I hope he gets treated right in the next couple of years, but I don't have faith that they will. I don't either. So I'd like to finish this with a Riley quote where Please. he said, look at how they massacred my boy. And that is so true. Yeah. And so that's going to do it for goddamn GameCube. This was an interesting run of um, us talking about uh, Rayman you know, past the original trilogy. Mm. Uh, hey, hopefully if, if our luck on this show continues, there will be another Rayman. It seems like whenever we talk about something, a company announces a sequel to the thing we talk about. It happened with Little Nightmares, Hellblade. Maybe it'll happen with this too. Um, so that's going to do it for now. They massacred Rayman. <laughs> um, and so I hope he gets help for his substance abuse issues. And we will see you next time on Goddamn GameCube. Thank you. <laughs>